Welcome back to the Brew Crew Podcast, everyone. This is episode 255, and I'm thankful that we're here in the tr- in the oh, church room. Bar. I'm just going back and forth between mine and your bar names. We're in a bar together. We're in a bar together, and that's what matters. We've that's had what a, we're thankful for. We we I'm thankful too. We've had a murderer's row, and cheers yes, to that. Cheers. We've had a murderer's row of uh, just life, availability, vacations, trips. It's crazy. Everything, and not like close ones either, like multiple states away. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we, we, we've got them in. I we mean, we're still in. consistent. Still consistent. Episodes are still dropping. And for those content hounds out there, we're content getting into hounds. our busiest content. Oh, yeah. Content chuggalos. Contact hound chuggalos. You're about to get so much content. I, I mean, we averaged last year, I went through, we were averaging 2.8 videos a day. Wow, 2.8? Yeah, so some days were more and some days were just at two. That's, that's a really good Never, uh, nice Never number. less than two. Never less than two, never more than 100. I, th- I think our highest one was 97 videos we had. Every yeah, day. that was that one day. The, it was like the Marilyn Manson album where it's nine, it's 99 track. That's so Antichrist like 70 Superstar. 70 of them are blank. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Uh, <gasps> Math in Public, 16 real tracks in the last one. So 17 real tracks. Back out 99. Uh, 82? 83. 83. There you go. Very good. So, give me your best Black Friday deal. What's it? What's it going to be? What are you buying? Uh, you getting a new projector, HD projector? Not on. Getting a, not, you're an, he's an electronics guy. I'm not. You like gadgets I, and gadgets. I haven't looked at any deals. Damn. I am either. not prepared. Me neither. I wasn't prepared there's, either. There's Black Friday beers out there. Um, oh, our Black Friday beers. Our, our friends at uh, Barrel House have our 20, friends. 25% off merchandise in the store. Oh, shit. I should have waited to buy that shirt. So, um, on Black Friday. 25% off. And it's, uh, I like that, too, because uh, they, they could do it Saturday for the shop local event mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I oh, think yeah. they're, they're doing it Friday. Well, for shop local, this breaking news, 100% off um, all barrel-aged beers. Oh, barely. They here. just texted that to me. No, don't don't go there. And yeah, say don't that. go that's there. That's not don't, true. Don't tell Sarah. That's not true. That that's not the case. Um, yeah. So um, the BCBS comes out Black Friday. It does. There's a lot of pictures coming out. Um, this this last week, I had a 2016 BCBS. Uh, we'll get more into that. But there's still Good. a lot of 2022s that are out on the shelf. Yeah. In the last week. To a week and a half since uh, I've I've last recorded an appropriate video, maybe more on that later. Uh, there's been a lot of pictures of people posting 2022s that are still out on the shelf. Oh yeah, I've seen that. And for those who aren't initiated, it's Bourbon County Barrel Age Stout, BCBS, right? Bourbon County Brand Stout. Brand Stout. Yeah, because I uh, we we had a couple of. We had a couple of uh, drinks in us, and I had to keep asking, "How do I take this in?" Because mm. I kept screwing up the tag, and I was like, "This beer doesn't exist," and I know it exists, obviously. Yeah. But it was a, it was a 2016. It was delightful. Oh yeah, 2016, great year. Um, great year. Yeah. Probably one of my favorite years. Uh, Cubs won the World Series that year. Yeah, there you go. For those who that, didn't, that's know. what we. That's what I. November sure we 3rd, were, 2016. I'm sure we were commemorating. Uh, but anyways, the reason why I had it, and uh, I was up at uh, Deer Camp up in the Great White North. Uh, I had to drop off seven calendars, so I dropped off seven calendars in three days. I was like the worst kind of Santa Claus ever. Mm. Uh, and then when we got there, I decided to start what turned into a one-up. So I brought a bunch of stuff from the cellar. Seth, who I've uh, mentioned, I can't say he's a chuggalo because he's never listened. He's a chuggalo. But he's well over 10,000 beers. Welcome, Seth. We are just trying to one-up each other. Mm. So then it just turned into a... Um, like a drink off. It, it, it was, but we had four people, thank goodness, that were, and there's a couple other people that were nipping off of it. But we always said, and this is the always, always the thing that I, I like to tell people: when you're drinking something big and expensive or whatever, feel free to tell people you're not going to like this because that's a waste. Yes. Like, and, oh yeah, don't try to like, yeah, we're, this isn't like not hurt feelings time. Hurt their feelings. It's it's right. It's you know when you're dropping. Uh, do you remember the $110 bottle that we dropped? So, uh, at the, at, um, the bar at Barrel House? Yeah, Barrel House. How was that? Buddy? Um, you didn't have any? No. I thought, here, I, we haven't talked about this. Whoa! I thought that when your, when your, uh, comrade left at two, that was it. 
Mm -hmm. I thought that was being, like, the day was being called. Yeah. So I was like, hey, Caterade, I think it's over. Come pick me up. You didn't get any. But you guys wound up all staying. And I left, and I was like, "Shit, I don't think the day's over yet." Did I did I communicate to you that I would feel no, bad if I communicated? But okay. I, while you were putting stuff in the box, and it's okay. I mean, and um, I saw the prices, and I was like, "Oh, these are going to be great at hunting." So, so you guys had the one ten beer. I think I heard maybe Steph mention it. So Steph got some. Yeah, how was it? It was delightful. Oh, I, I mean, I mean that. But we split point, it. Please, I thought you were in on it. I think nah. we split it eight ways. So that's like an ounce. Oh, maybe ounce I paid for some of it and I didn't drink any. No, 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 no. You did. Okay. Believe me, okay. you didn't. I got the receipt to prove that. Oh, you uh, paid for the. Oh, you split it eight ways, drink wise. Yeah, I, and I split it with the bar. Okay. Because they've oh. never had it either. So what a generous guy you are. Um, well, you know, after the day that we had, mm-hmm. um, it's easy to be generous. So, anyways, we had the most expensive beer I've ever bought in my life split at the bar and th- it was awesome it was an awesome experience mm-hmm. to have with them and then i bought two more of the 90 dollars varieties mm-hmm. and i took I those i took one of those north okay and then the other one is sitting so that one cool. that that barley wine it was not um w- there's huge disagreements everyone was at like everyone's on the same scoring that we do everyone uses untapped scoring okay the lowest beer that we had was a four or five and there was multiple fives Damn. but no one agreed there was no quorum mm. And it just goes to show you that, it, and we stayed away from, one of them was a barrel-aged sour that I have multiple bottles of, but I wanted to drink that one fresh. The other ones I'm going to sit on for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. But even even in that group, sours are polarizing, but like everyone digs barley wine, stouts, big, mm-hmm. big beers like that. The conversation that erupted is why we do this. Absolutely. And that's what I wanted to, like, we, we didn't agree, and then as... As we've talked about on the podcast before, um, there's people that want that stout to be warmed up. Yeah, there are and people out tough. there like that. I don't want my beer sitting in front of a heater, mm-hmm. like warming up. Weird. I want it cold. I don't want warm beer. And uh, so I understand <laughs> getting it to like 45 or whatever, but there's a couple of these that felt like they were in the 50s. And we're sitting sitting there sipping. I had a big, I had a big coffee cup I was drinking out of that. Mm. It just happened to be my cup. Sounds awesome. Um, but uh, it... it it was interesting, and I appreciate opportunities like that where you're trying to one-up each other. There's a conversation. This is why I bought this beer, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, that's all it turned into. Uh, we knocked one guy out. The biggest guy, the probably the biggest drinker amongst us, he said he didn't know what happened, but mm. apparently the stouts hit him. Yeah, I mean, when you're drinking big beers like that, the pace, uh, the, the speed at which you get drunk yeah. it just is so rapid. It, it increases crazy and and then you'd be glad to know that i got so much crap um uh over flights over flights because yeah. you're, you're anti-flight i'm anti-flight everyone else is everyone else everyone up there else is pro-flight is pro-flight i i'm also pro-flight i think which is why get, get get your you give the brewery their due you know but i know you say just buy one full glass of pint right. of everything i say try everything and then continue to buy full pints of the ones you like um yeah, so the, I'm very pro-flight. I think uh, it's, it's a great idea because there's breweries that I go to that have 20 beers on tap. I want to try them all, and, and a flight makes that possible. Indeed. Indeed. There's a dog in the back here. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's yeah, all it's, good. Believe it or not, it's we, not a professional sound studio. We got it. We got Well, it is. We got it covered. Uh, yeah, let me think. So... Uh, oh, so well, we can talk about the advent calendar. I, I avoided talking about the specific beers. I just categorized them. <clears throat> but also, I, um, I got an email from Epic. You might have got the same emails talking about their Big Bad Baptist releases for this year. Yeah, are they doing another peanut butter? Because I've got a Big Bad. Uh, I've got an Epic. Well, Epic sign right over uh, JT's left shoulder over there. But I've got a Big Bad Baptist uh, row. Mm-hmm. And I try to get the peanut butter and jelly ones when I see them. Yeah, they're doing. They have uh, a whole bunch. You want? Me, let me just read them off. Sure. Because we're and, and I think we've mentioned the ones for BCBS that are coming out. But these are the Big Bad Baptist. So obviously the 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 main uh, year round Big Bad Baptist. Then there's mass. There's Brewmasters Keep, which I'm not going to read all of the text here, but it's a cool barrel aged version. Cellar. It's Epic Cellar Team. Uh, perfects that beer. Big, bad, censored, naked Baptist. Um, yep, I'm going to sneeze at some point here. <coughs> There's snot. 
I will read them. Here, you want to read these? Well, sure. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, Clean the footers off my shirt. I'll, I'll, I'll carry it. I've got thoughts. So, anyways, our good friends at Epic, they've got a s'mores one, blueberry pie, chocolate caramel, which I'm in because sea salt, uh, this is something I learned, um, especially with adjuncts or whatever. Salt is a, a wonderful addition, especially in gozes. Uh, uh, ironic, fun story about that. On December 4th, I don't know if it's going to, I think it might be a Monday. Um, I will have a fun story for us for the beer that's on December 4th. That's the only one that I know on that day. And Coquito, Coquito, Coquito. is a, Sounds well, it's, it's a Hunter S. Thompson inspired ah, beer. So I Hunter tell S. You. Thompson. Inspired by the Puerto Rican cocktail. Mm -hmm. uh, aged in rum barrels, laced with rum, soap, coconut, no. Oh, that and finished good. with cinnamon and vanilla. Sounds very good. So that's Never Epic's of release of Big Bad Baptist. They're growing. They're growing. The, the amount of Big Bad Baptist. Was it always that many? Yeah, the, I mean, oh, it has it, been? very okay. similar. Did you did you have any, when you were in Utah, did you have any Epic? No. Did you have any opportunity to get off? No. And uh, the, um, primarily the stuff I saw was Roosters. Roosters? That was the majority of the beer that I was seeing. Um, and I don't think we really went to like craft beery places. Oh, gotcha. You know, like the, everyone else was kind of like, they, I, they all drank Blue Moon. That was their thing. I was proud of you. When you checked in, it mm -hmm. must have been like six o'clock Utah time, but I got the, I that got the notification day. at 9 a.m. 9 a.m.? Yeah, so here. So I don't know when, when you know. You got the, the notification at 9 a.m.? Yeah, it was early in the day. And I was like, my man. It should have been later. Yeah. It was, it was early. Yeah. I, I did say, because this is going to be a, a foreshadow. I brought a bunch of taco parties. I bought out taco oh, yeah, parties I bought some more. multiple different places. Arrow still has about four or five um, four packs left. So I bequeathed them to multiple people and everyone, not not fives, but at least four, seven, five. Oh, yeah, high up there. I bought some more myself. And again, very good. What, what surprised people is, for me, is the fact that it's an orange beer mm -hmm. and it highlights the orange and the fact that I liked it. Mm -hmm. That just goes to show you it's not that fake orange. It's not that fake orange. It's uh, and that marshmallow really peeks out. Yeah, it uh, helps uh, increase, the, and that's why I think it's that it has that triple X profile. Yeah, rather than the single X. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm glad you said brought into Advent thoughts, and I, I I'm glad you did the breakdown on type. Um, I think mm -hmm. what was it Saturday morning? I got up at like 4:30, and I was typing out the list after the Advent calendar to get it out to people. Uh, it it's an interesting list. Now Good that, diversity. That, that I had to put it through. Outside of the IPA category. Good diversity. Yeah. Um, omitted, we don't have any barley wines. No bar. I was going to mention that myself. No um, barley wines. A little disappointed there. So I know, and I'm going to defend Sarah because we gave her a $300-ish budget. Mm -hmm. She ended up way below, way but below. she didn't know. She's not pricing them as yeah, she yeah. goes. So, like, in her head, she's trying to keep a tally because there's a couple more expense. Like, we've had bigger, more expensive ones throughout. Mm -hmm. But she raised the average price with the except – they're, like, they're, the Bavic is super cheap. Mm. Um, there's a couple mm -hmm. There's a couple that are, like, sub five. But other than that, uh, those outliers, yeah. um, it, it, it's it's interesting. I mean, I appreciate um, the work she does. It's, it, I'm not disappointed in the results, I think. It's hard to match that first year yeah. with just the surprises we had. And I think she got some really um, kooky beers in there. Like like the first year we had that coffee sour. There is an equivalent in this year's. The sour <clears throat> this year has an interesting profile. I can't remember what it is. Off the top oh, you looked you looked that quick? Mm -hmm. I just looked at names and stuff like that. You looked oh, yeah. Like no, when I, when I categorized, I didn't look at your list. I sat down and looked at each beer oh, to try okay. to actually figure out what is this beer. Um, and then the ones off tap, I looked on untapped. Yes. Um, and, so, and so the so so the list I just put out, you know, the uh, brewer, the name, mm -hmm. and then the type. Yeah. So I went and I looked at the actual beer, read the type, you know, wit beer, triple IPA. There's a couple triple IPAs. It's gonna be IPA heavy. Very IPA heavy, but, which uh, should satisfy uh, a few people. There might be one outlier that I might get comments on, and then there's a complete wild card where somebody bought it for somebody else. So we'll 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 see. Uh, it'll mm. be interesting to get that feedback, and that's all, that's all I ask for people. Um, if if they're not making videos or watching every day or whatever, like, you know, there's 24 beers. I just hope to hear about five of them, be it yeah. good, bad, or indifferent. Because make that's videos and send relate. them to us. We'll post them on the channel. Always do. Get in your Sunday's best outfit or your best sweats every Sunday. 24 Sundays every in a row. day. Get in your best Sundays. 
Um, but yeah, there, there, there's a couple of, there's a really funny one. It happens, I think it's December 4th. I think that's our mm. first Advent Monday because I think the Friday is, I'm counting that right. That'll be an episode. It'll be funny. The beer, we'll do it. Uh, we'll do it live. Do it live. It, you won't, you won't believe once you guys see it, you won't believe this story. All right. So that's a little foreshadow. I believe it already. The beer for today. Beer as for we today. Enter, um, JT. Yeah. If you get uh, guess the type of beer, I'll give you twenty dollars right now. Do I get any like clues? Yes. Like, what's the name of the beer? Uh, uh, Will that give it away? Feurig. F E U R I G. Feurig. Uh, I'm gonna say it's a uh, Scottish ale. No. Okay. Okay. You can guess again. Um, it's a German style. German style. Kolsch. Okay. It's a smoked Schwartz beer. Oh, okay. That's what, that was my third guess. You would have got... Oh, well, I, okay. I would have never guessed that. This is Cinderlands in collaboration with Noble Creatures. Uh, um, Cinderlands. Furig. Pittsburgh. It's a smoked Schwartz beer coming in at 4.6%. They're out of Pittsburgh, PA, and Noble Creatures is out of Youngstown, Ohio. Ah. Uh, their website, if we go with the crack, because we haven't done one of these in a a little while. Okay. Good to go? Mm-hmm. Three, two, one. Oh, that's perfect. That's excellent. Uh, their website, you can go to cinderlands. Smells like cigarettes. Dot com. It is smoked. Um, it's basic, but a, lo- a massively large brewery. Um, and they highlight mm. both the size of it, um, their ability to mm. output, and they, they give the square footage <laughs> of their kitchen. They've got a 3,000 square foot kitchen. So to me... Both in the website, the pictures and everything, it sounds like Rheingeist. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, wow. <laughs> I, uh, it's funny. I, uh, I'm going to go with the first. Go, go my, with it. Let's see. My first impressions. Mm. I did give this to a friend. It's, um, it's got a very, it's strong. Um, from I, not an alcohol perspective. I, I gave this to a friend. It's amazing. Um, and I said, I'm going to do this on the podcast. Don't tell me anything. Mm. And he's from Pittsburgh. He's okay. from, you know, Butler, Great. which is just... I, I Pittsburgh. enjoy Pittsburgh. Um, the best thing about Pittsburgh? Pierogies. I love pierogies. The uh, pierogi pizza, I've probably talked about it. Let's be honest, at this point, I've probably talked about everything I've ever done on this podcast. Went to uh, PNC for on July 4th for Cubs Pop Pirates is it uh, one, a couple is years it, ago. Is it one of the best ballparks? It's such a great ballpark. Oh, my gosh. So it's, it's The ballparks with the view are the best. When you when you like encapsulate your fans, you don't give them the best experience. PNC's just got great view, great atmosphere, great craft beer selection, and uh, at that point in time, the Cubs were still really good. Uh, so just a fun time all around, and we had a pierogi pizza I, before the game. I feel like, and Cinderlands will tell you on their website again, Cinderlands.com, that they distribute in Pennsylvania and select places in Ohio. That's it. Wow. So it brings up the conversation. We we have a lot of New York beers. I mean, there's tons yeah, of it, so granted population-wise. But Pennsylvania is not a small state population-wise. Besides Yingling, you know, and uh, Chuggalo Dave, I do appreciate you sending me the Yingling uh, fan club group on Facebook. Uh, but with Pennsylvania, I can't name, like, the, the craft beer, like... Mm-hmm. Me neither. But we can name 30 from New York, uh, you know, like Treehouse in Massachusetts, you know, Maine Brewing Company. Uh, you know, we can go up Alchemist. We can go up into the Northeast a little bit more, but Pennsylvania, I'm a little... Yeah, it's I'm hard. Lost. Other than Latrobe. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Rolling Rock. Uh, Plank Road, you know, Plank Road Brewery with, a, you know, a Red Dog. Ooh, Red Dog. Um, but... Again, no, not craft beer. Yeah, though. you don't you don't get think that very often. Is that right? a blind spot for us? Yeah, it's a blind spot for us. So I, when I went there, there are breweries like pretty well. But there's Steel well City Reserve or whatever. But um, but uh, they're just not proliferated. Yeah. So and that, the reason why I preface that was saying again on they talk about distribution on their website. They have this big beautiful facility, hmm. but it seems like Pennsylvania and they said select places in Ohio. Well, and they ha- they had a map, but I don't know if they just self distribute or what the deal is. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, they they should get some of this beer out there more. Not this one, but but Ooh. beers that they make. Um, it, this is this is going to be a, again. So this is a four point six percent. It's the first Schwartz beer we've done on the beer or on the podcast, excuse me. And it just happens to be smoked. 
And smoked I don't, hard. I don't know if that comes through. I don't know. Smoked if... hard. I mean, it's it's basically. I when I opened this, uh, basically all the remnants of a campfire came out of it. Um. Yeah. Right. And I just spent the last week in a cabin that was hit heated only by campfire. I think that the okay. Well, let's just talk about it. Uh, camera boner segment. I don't know if this point who was brought to the spot. Last week I said Gerald. Yeah, you did. I paused for a second there. You can read There's the a lot of words, a lot of description on that back end. A lot end. of words. Canada Butter Segment brought to you by Barrel House. Thanks, Barrel House. You guys did a great job. Uh, so it's, it's got a, um, a bone that is acting as like a t- Olympic torch, kind of. Um, I guess that would be like a femur. And uh, Furig. Very, it's kind of cool. It kind of looks like, um, I don't even know what this would be like, almost a tarot card kind of feel to it. Very that, that is an inverted plain, femur. An inverted femur. Um, and then... Because of the ball socket. The background is um, a waves, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. They look like waves to me. Or something. And then... Uh, yeah, the back's got a lot of words on it. Pretty nice. I like the noble creature logo. It's a skeleton. Just, it's a very. It is a, an eye-catching can. Good can art. I like the this kind of basic tarot card like thing here. I'm not exactly sure. Tarot card's probably not the right thing. It's some sort of like um, object identification card. So I don't really know. It'd be like when you show kids cards when they're trying to learn words and spell words and stuff. That's the Can Art Bonus segment brought to you by Barrel House. <clears throat> this beer is adjacent to undrinkable. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, wow. The the it really does elicit campfire vibes, but not like um, your clothes smelling like campfire. Like literally, if like the next day when you're poking out the the ash and the embers from your campfire the previous night and there's still some hot ones in there a little dust gets in your mouth uh from just like poking it and stuff that's what this beer tastes like like literally uh like charred wood and it is unappealing it this it really lingers for quite a while i what i think you need how can you even make this beer better it's so strong on the smoke i don't I, I've had smoked beers before, and and I've had smoked whiskey, and I don't like any of them. So maybe it's a me thing, and I'm willing to accept that. Um, maybe there's a market out there for people who like to taste campfire wood in their beer. I'm not that audience. I think you should probably boost up the alcohol content in this beer. Four is way too low for the amount of flavor this has. So if, if you were judging just like... If you're at the beer festival and there's a smoked beer category, this has to win. <laughs> it has to because it's the most delivered smoke taste I've ever had in, in a single beverage. So if, so in that regard, great job. You did it. You smoked the shit out of this beer. Um, but in regards to making a beer that has good taste that um, I would return to voluntarily, you did not accomplish that task. And I don't know. If, maybe that wasn't what you set out to. This beer, I, I honestly think this is going to be a drain pour, but I'm going to do my best. Wow. 0. 0.25. Uh, I don't like this beer. This is going to be... In Cinderlands, you sound great, but... This is going to be the largest chasm that we've ever had. Um, I, I'll i go into the spreadsheet, but yeah, I'm coming in off the top beer. rope. I'm going to give this a 4.0. Damn. As a conversation this starter, that's good. where this beer... Um, is it crushable? Sure, if this is your thing. The like only you, way to drink this is to chug it as fast as you can. You wouldn't want this to warm up. Uh, so it's interesting looking at like some of the commentary or whatever as I was putting in the score. The the top, you know, smoked, whatever, but comment three is dark, comment four is light. So dark, dark light. taste, light taste. Pal, like it's it's an easy drinking beer outside of that. Ha- you know yeah, what I'm it saying? Ha- it does have that um, Th- that German that, um, lighter that lighter German quenching yeah. thirst quenching type of mouthfeel. So if if you pulled this because I have one more can, if you pulled this in Mystery Cooler of Death, this would trip you up. Oh, this would be this would be tough. Yeah, this would trip me up. 
Interesting. This would trip me up. I can't. I, I, I just can't. I can't see that. I can't see anyone enjoying this beer. I enjoy how different it is. I enjoy how different it is. I'm glad that it, that I had it. I'm I'm glad I experienced it. Um, it doesn't do much for the. So you would pair this with community. a toilet. I, I do wonder what this would taste like with like a hearty meat or you know yeah like savory. a stew, a stew yeah, yeah. A stew or a steak something like that, um, and and it might improve, you know just coating the palate with something else, first maybe. Interesting. But this so, is just not something not definitely beer. savory or whatever. Uh, again, to hammer this home, the smoke profile on this uh, in JT. How how much how many chips they must have smoked to mm-hmm. get this flavor to resonate on this can? It's it's, it's not second even smoking, to none. You're not smoking them. You're literally lighting them on fire. I and waiting I waiting until I, they burn to a crisp and then and then just like incinerating them into the beer. I, I bought this. We're from, probably drinking ashes. I, I I bought this from Pat and this is uh it was one of my trips to Pat's. This was oh, one of so the trips where I keep out, out of every everything that I bought. Pat and his employee talked about this beer the most. His empl- in what way? His employee, he said, "That's my favorite beer in the store." What? Right now, he did. Damn. And and Damn. Pat and Pat Pat was like, and this was right before the uh, calendar build, or a week before. I was like, and that's the first time I tried to get Pat to come down. And Pat mm. Pat said he, sorry, Stacy. Pat said he would think about it. I said I would pay him. I would pay some of his calendar just to get him down there, just because I would think it would be hilarious. But mm-hmm. um, he ended up not doing it. So um, I, either way, but uh, it's I like it again off the top rope four point I'm happy you do. Uh, is would it sit in my fridge all the time? No, by no means. Mm-hmm. But I think this is this has got to be a seasonal beer for them. I hope so. I hope it's just the one it's, season and that's it. It's just the one. <laughs> this is a one and done. I just, for I can't. Point two five. I being God, I dig good that. To people. This, it's this is like right there with Wild I'm Ohio. I'm glad. I'm glad that you enjoy it because I just can't fathom anyone enjoying this beer. I, I I try seeking out different beer types and that again like a Schwartz beer and it just happened to have a yeah smoke again profile they shift. they succeed in being unique they succeed in delivering like an uh, like just a wall of flavor. It has and that's that, rare because some beers really don't deliver that. It has that German signature or you know, fleur on the end of the taste too, where it's you're like that. That's inherently German. Mm. It's not Belgian, you know. It's not um, Dutch by any means. It, it doesn't have that funk like you get like a Heineken or something like that. It's got that like earthy signature, malt roasty oh, malt earthy, signature sure. at I the mean, bottom. Just, yeah, earthy. As if, if if you went into a controlled burn. If you went into a controlled <laughs> burn. I like it. And the, again, this is why like we, we need to do these. And yeah, have, sometimes have you got to have shit beer, you know. you got to have. I'll even, I keep going back for more just to remind myself how terrible it is. Uh, beer number beer number it's two. terrible. Beer number two. I can't drink it. I'm dumping it. Sorry. Um, do we, I hate to waste your money. I'm, um, I apologize. No, no, that's fine. Again, it's. Uh, we've done over 500 beer, mm-hmm. and you've drain poured two, three, maybe a few, yeah. That you've drain poured, yeah, yeah. Not that you know. We've had some big ones. Mm-hmm. That's what we call in the business a segue. Ooh, a we're segue. only doing we're only doing one of these. You just do one. That's good. So this is I like beer segue. beer number two. I've got to rinse. This is a cerveza s- dos. Cerveza, uh, well, it's Swedish. I don't know how you say that in Swedish, but this is yeah. a, a Dugges or Duges, D U G G S Brewery. How do you spell brewery? D U G G S Dugs? E S. Oh, E S. Um, but it's Swedish. How do you pronounce? I'll spell it for it, but if you can get close, this is going to be a guessing game. Mm-hmm. How do you spell brewery in Swedish? How do you spell brewery in Swedish? B. Yep. R. Yep. E U. Nope. Uh, why? B no B R Y G G E R I S. What? And, and this is Dudges Brewery. Okay. Uh, so and, if the, if there's two G's in that, yep. Then there, and there's two G's in the name. Yep. Then they're probably pronounced similarly. Yep. That's uh and neither pronunciation I'm going to do correctly. I'm going to guess. Yeah, most likely. This is their coffee, and I'm just holding this. Let it to warm up. This is a coffee vanilla deluxe. Uh, it's a stout. 15%. That's Damn. why we're doing one bottle. Doug's. 
50%. Uh, they started in 2012. You can check out their website. It's all, completely in English. Oh, wow. Even though that the brewery name, B-R-Y-G-G-E-R-I-S, is uh, the only Swedish thing. At Dugis, D-U-G-G-E-S dot S-E, which is the uh, suffix for Sweden. And they're in Landvetter, Sweden. I guess you wouldn't have got that, huh? Oh, yeah. No, I would have never, never you would have guessed, guessed this, Landvetter. The home, home of the... Four leaf clover. <laughs> they, yeah, they, uh, I didn't know that. So when they started, oh, that pours a little diesel. Home of the ice. So when they started in 2012, it was a Thank couple you. of English guys that moved to Sweden and influenced, Whoa. and they took three years till they started making their first product. This is liquor for sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this this does not hide it. I gotta watch. I gotta wash my damn. Back Damn, I will, and I'll talk a little bit while you're doing that. Sure. I want to, I can't, I, I don't know, people who can, um, like, visualize the letters of a word and then spell it out loud. I can't spell out loud. Don't ever ask me to spell out loud. And, and you spelled those words for me, and I was still on, like, the second letter when you were already, like, done spelling it. Because trying to, I can't envision words in my head for some reason. I, I have a voice. You know, I have, like, the narrative. JT does have a voice. But I don't have just that picture of words in my head that I can just go, like, oh, this is how you spell it. So I have no idea how to pronounce these these words. But I want to look at the name of the brewer again. What, what, what movie is it where it's um, Simple Sam? I, my picture's in my head. <laughs> uh, Brigeri. Nailed it. Brigeri. Ooh. I get, like, Imported. a pepper. By 12% LLC. Ooh, an LLC. Smart. That's how you hide the money. Do you get a pepper? This is my first sip. Oh, this beer, by the way, is no longer in production. I found that out. There is pepper in this. Huh. This is gonna... This is gonna be an interesting beer. It's gonna put me over. Yeah, well, that's why, and it, it comes in, and we always used to say, like, pint cans and stuff. This is an 11, very Euro-style model. It's 11.2%. Super, Super Euro. Can art boner segment. And there it is. I don't think there's much to say about this can art. Bottle art, if you will. I got to get the taste of this burnt campfire out of my mouth so I can really enjoy this beer the way it's meant to be. I don't think that'll work. Um... So Can Art Boner segment, it's just your standard. A lot of European beers don't go for a lot of like flair and fanfare on their Can Art. Neither does this one. So um, you get the words, and and they are in English, so that's nice. That was nice of them. And I don't know if that's done by them or the the importer. (coughs) They put the ingredients right on there. Um, Whiskey barrel aged... Imperial Stout. Yeah. Um, okay. Colombian. There's so much going on here. They have. It's a Swedish beer. Mm-hmm. It's got Colombian tabby coffee. Um, and it's barrel aged in whiskey barrels with vanilla. And that's it. Uh, that's a lot of things going on. That's the Canada Burner segment. Not much to report. Um, NSTR. Nice. Uh, all right. The flavor of this beer. What is the flavor of this beer? I was looking through other people's comments because my thoughts are zany. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to pinpoint the flavor and I don't want to be like too... I don't want it to come off as, as like a joke because it's what I taste, but because it's not coffee or vanilla. Maybe right. there's vanilla in there. Maybe. Um, yeah, it tastes like maybe there's like um, black pepper, like dinner table pepper, um, but not not. There's no actual spice on the tongue, just like the the breath. Yeah. Of what it tastes like. Um, this 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 episode's gonna be infamous for years to come. <laughs> Why? I feel it. I mm, I maybe maybe for you. Maybe I'm just you've got such a good poker poker hand. 
I can't figure this beer out. I, I feel like um Do you get the coffee? Not you get really. the vanilla. Again, I get the vanilla. Dudges, I get coffee, the alcohol. vanilla deluxe. I feel like this is just gonna it's such a weird thing. Um like plastic. But it, but not like a bad plastic, like just um I don't know. I really don't know how to describe it. It's got this like clean, it's clean. It's got this cleanness to it. I don't really know how to describe it. It's got a, definitely I could taste like table pepper, dinner table, whatever it is called, black pepper. Um, but but again, just the flavor of it, not yeah. the spice. No, I'm, 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 I'm following The here. alcohol, I know, I'm just kind of recapping for myself really because I'm getting lost. Yeah, it's got like maybe, I want to say... Um, have you ever bitten into a raw potato? Yes. It's got a little bit of that in it. Interesting. Skin, skin and, and. That's why I don't like baked potatoes. I like baked potatoes. I don't like raw potatoes. I, uh, I will. I've tasted them before. I will often make baked potatoes for, uh, I will often make steak, sorry. And everyone else's around me, like my, all my close friends. Friends, family, loved ones, their favorite potato is a baked potato. I, it's not my favorite potato, but I and do like baked potatoes. I will be like, you pick up your own potato. I don't know how to cook it. I will gladly just eat the steak. And I did I did, I did, did steak up at the cabin. Uh, I bought filet mignon, as I typically do, and I made those all up for everyone. Oh, nice. But, Very nice. So um, generous. I don't, I, I'm one who doesn't see uh, where you are with baked potatoes is where I'm with corn on the cob. I just don't. Like the appeal, I it, I just don't understand why everyone's so obsessed with it being on the cob. I, I love take that shit off the cob. I love corn. Okay. I like corn. Corn, I'm the same with with oranges. You don't they're, like fake corn. I'm no. They're the <laughs> best in uh, uh, orange. Only goes downhill from when you take it out from of the, fresh. Yep. Mm -hmm. Corn on the cob is the same way for me. It only goes downhill. Mm. Corn on the cob is the best, but it's a vehicle just to get butter and salt into right. your mouth. Yeah, right, exactly. That's that's the one appeal of corn on the cob. Gro growing but up, actually eating it and getting all that shit in your teeth and stuff. Growing up on a dairy oh, farm, um, my my daughter, my oldest daughter, her her favorite meal would be beef and cabbage and corn on the cob. I do love. Well, I like corned beef and cabbage. And she would she would eat three ears of corn. Yeah, I could eat just a lot. I could eat a lot of ears. It. I would rather just take. And it she off doesn't even want all the gimmicks on it. She'll just eat it. Like for me, corn is lost. Like I want corn, the gimmicks. Corn in a soup, salt and butter. Done. Corn in a salad. Oh, you don't like done. corn in a soup? No. Oh it, yeah, it, cream of cream cream of something with corn in it. I no, like that. it's good. It's because you we can't digest again. It's just a vehicle for butter and salt, which everyone loves. You can't digest the rind. You, you, so don't swallow it whole. Chew it. It has uh, flavor. Corn has flavor. There's a reason why the adage goes, there's there's corn in my poop. And I Is even, that the I adage? Even corn. Yeah. Poop that corn. Uh, there's That's why cows digest it, because they have four stomachs. Because it takes four stomachs to digest corn. Damn. <laughs> it's science. Cows are really dumb. Uh, no. You think they're smart? Um, uh, yes. Okay. Fair enough. I haven't been around as many cows as you. Yeah. I feel like this beer's identity is um, lost in a way. And um, I wish it could find its own identity. The vanilla's there. The alcohol is just like so prevalent. And, and it makes me wonder what all of these other brewers are doing to make that not prevalent. Because they didn't do that, whatever that step was. Um, very boozy. It elicits um, just like a lot of question, more questions than answers. What like the you know the potato thing or plastic or there's like a it is there's a cleanness to this beer in that most of these stouts that claim coffee on the label I know a lot of them taste like coffee because of the malt but this actually has coffee in it. They usually coat the tongue really for a while and you're like can't get it off your tongue this one doesn't it actually kind of washes away pretty quickly which i appreciate um but and then i have to wonder how much of the burned char beer is hurting the flavor of this regardless of it um i think this beer is good 
I don't think it's great because I think that it loses its identity with that. Should we have had this coffee. one first, do you think? Should I have inverted it? It's no. hard to say because this one might ruin the palate for that one. And then we'd ask the same question. Like, does this taste like such shit because the stout? Yeah. We'd, we'd ask the same question. I think it was the right order, actually. Um, man, what do I give this beer? I give, uh, I give this beer... It's got to be... Man, I'm vacillating. I want it to be higher, but it's a 3.0. Because it's just... I just don't... I'll never remember this beer. So I have a couple more bottles of this beer. And uh, off the top rope, I give this beer a 2.5. It is not... 2.5. There, there is something in there that is not intended. Mm. Um, this beer ages well. I was I was flipping through like the untapped. They only made it over a couple of years. So this beer is either five or six years old. I can't find it on the... Uh, I can't find it on the app on how to locate it or whatever, but they only made it during a two year period. And so it's either five or six years old. It tastes like an old book mm. smells. Oh yeah. Good. And That's a good call. I like that. Like it's not like smells. dust, but you just that, that staleness just that and brown the, paper. The beer is not stale or anything no, like no. it. It, it's, it was, it's ideal, fresh. it was ideally kept. But there is something there that just, I don't get, I mean, if it, if that was the coffee, because coffee and vanilla are the two flavors. Mm -hmm. if, it, if that was coffee, you wouldn't like it as coffee. If, if no. that's vanilla, like it's the, just the most robust, earthy, disappointing vanilla you've ever had. It's not even vanilla extract or whatever. Like, and vanilla is one of the most expensive, what, spices in the world? Yeah, it's vanilla possible they just threw spices. a bunch of sticks in there and just expected it to, you know, suck in. And, and, and there's people like that crave this beer and want them. Be, and uh, the, uh, Duchess is very active on social media, from what I can tell. Oh, shit. So, they're gonna so, light us so up. When, we post, when we post these comments, tag it's going to be. We're going to tag them, and it, they're going to hate us. It's, it's going to be interesting, especially if they have a Facebook. Um, We're happy to drink with you guys. And, and I like the rest thought. of their. I'll go again, to Sweden. I love the rest of their website. Again, it they they're. Amer the, it's vibrant colors and everything like this. And this is very, we had a very European episode today. And oh, what I mean by European. that is it, there's not shocks or whatever. So you got to do the beauties and the subtleties of the beer. And neither one of these impressed our American yeah. palates. Sometimes the beauties in the subtleness. Yeah. With so, like taco party, the beauties in the loudness, the loudness, just, just overwhelm my palate. But not the taco party. There's one ingredient. It's orange, and then you know the the vanilla, vanilla or the mushroom is just the vehicle that gets it there. Marshmallow. Yeah. There, and I said mushroom. That's all right. It would be interesting a mu mushroom beer. I was I was looking. I bet at, they're out there. I was looking at um, I, I bought mushroom additive for coffee, but um, just today it's going to be here tomorrow. Mushroom additive for coffee. Yeah, it's uh, you can buy. There's a couple of different ones. I was listening to podcasts during my 11 hour drive yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, so one of them was Any a good ones? Ad, advocate for MCT oil, which I knew about, and uh, mushroom I don't know powder. What that is. MCT oil, it's the fat from coconut that um, like satiates you. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff that makes you have to shit. Um, I, I had no problem doing that this last weekend. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, coconut oil um, is, 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 a, it was a, 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 a laxative. Yeah, oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I can see. I mean, because it's an oil. Any sort of oil like yeah. that just goes through you. It, it just it, it coats that membrane. Can I, if, wow, as we go through. Interesting combination this is, of beers. Man, I thought these glasses were bigger. They are. <laughs> They're bigger. Um, the, the, the Cinder Lane beer would just didn't hit. It was a miss. And this one is a hit in... Um, you know, five times out of ten. Can I... Maybe if we were three or four beers deep, this is just... We're just going to gush about this beer. No. Yeah, we need to be... We need to be... This beer... No, neither one of these beers. Yeah. I mean, that that one just... You well, you know, gave it a four. How, you gave it a four. But how... Four is pretty high. The smoked or... What, like, there's nothing... There's nothing off-putting. I'm it's buying strong, a four again. It's strong in a... It's strong... Uh, you... 
back me in the court. Yeah, I would buy it again. You would, okay. but to bequeath it to people. Well, like, I would have one. Count. I would have one with it. them. You, uh, I'm not drinking right, a whole right. four, four pack myself. Like taco party. Like if party, I'm over we're four, hoarding par- personally, if I'm over four, I'm I'm willing to drink this alone. I'm gonna choose to drink it. I'm sitting in my carriage house watching, you know. I would drink that watching alone. a yeah. pay per view or watching I, football. I like that delineation. Drink, you would drink this alone. Yep. You would choose to drink that, but not I, as my I one. If it's my one beer for the day, no. Okay. But as like a, 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 a as part of your flight. Yeah, as a part, part of, of my like day's sun, flight. Su- Sunday flight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, t- my Sunday, t- my Sunday take flight. Your Sunday well, I'm ticket. Gonna have, I'm gonna have multiple beers. This beer, this beer is. I I would feel ashamed because like I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring I have a couple more bottles of this. I'm gonna bring this to a bottle share. Mm. And I feel like I'm wasting people's bandwidth on the fifteen percent. Like this is different at four percent. Yeah. Oh yeah. Not, yeah. 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 This is a fifteen. Yeah. You're, you this you have to choose to drink this and you're choosing to. This is gonna have to, to go be, hard. Like you, you, you. This is a, this is two beers, for the price of one. Yeah. For your night, if you're if you're out drinking with people, you're like I'm gonna have this, and then I'm gonna take a th- like three hour break, two hour break, maybe one hour. I don't want to take a break. Breaks are bad. Just keep drinking. Sums off. I. I yeah, there's something. Some, it some just, doesn't feel intended. I don't. I don't think that. I don't think that something's off. I think what it is is that the yeast just attacked the shit out of. Uh, but people are still drinking the this sugar. beer. It's no longer in production, and people have had and this in the last two weeks. I think and they played the shit it safe. It. They played it safe with the with the level of flavor they put in. <clears throat> you got to amp it up. You got to amp it up. You know, a lot of times with coffee, and and of course they know this better than I do. You got to. You got the finer the the grind. The more flavor you get, but sometimes it gets too strong. Um, there's just not a lot of coffee flavor in this, and it, it's kind of hard to uh, hard to fathom. It's a beer with this much alcohol in it. You really got to amp up those flavors. Maybe the mistake they made was that they did use real coffee. Maybe that's the mistake, because most coffee beers are just burned malts, and they cl- like. Coffee's a profile, not an actual ingredient. Yeah. And maybe that is where this is differentiated from other beers. And it's like, that that wasn't necessarily a mistake. It's cool. But the coffee's lost. But, you know, there's people, and this is where, like, uh, it's a generation gap. Like, coffee is a flavor. And, you know, people get flavored coffees. Mm-hmm. And they want, like, foo-foo and all the, uh, yeah. you know... Adjuncts, if you want to coffee, French vanilla, yeah, but most of the generation before me and the people I I just dealt with them this last week. If it's not just black coffee, no cream, maybe a little bit of milk or something like that. I, I think that that's a unique group. I think that people of that age, that's not obsessed with cream in their coffee. Yeah, that well, they had it right, you know, because it satiates the, you know, the body a little bit, you know, put a little bit of fat into it or whatever. But like me, like just black coffee. That's I'm where I'm just like, coffee. and I don't get me wrong, I like my gimmicks every once in a while, but like it, it, it's lost on me where other people, you know, have that value to it. I'd rather, well, maybe it's because science is is more prominent in our in our generation, but if I'm gonna use the calories. I'd rather use them on like a delicious cold energy drink than a hot coffee with milk in it. Well, most calorie, most energy drinks don't have calories in them. No, yeah, that's true. But I'm just saying, if I'm, I'd rather just get a black coffee and budget my calories better. No, oh, I see. And just fucking yeah. putting cream in it for no reason. I'll just drink black coffee, and I'll have a better drink later. It's interesting. The best beer I've had out of these three is a Blapple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I it's not. That. I mean, even even that you know. I'm truly most, sad most by the Blapple um, heritage. Like we, we, you know, when JT arrived, you know, because of the, uh, um, you know, you do it, I do it, you do it. Like mm-hmm. we're both of us showed, you know, up loaded for bear. I was like, I've done the research on this beer multiple times. The uh, the Swedish beer, the Dugis. it was the right time for you, and uh, it's interesting. God. It's good. It's good to have misses. Yeah, it is good to I'm, have misses. I'm I'm elated that sometimes not home runs. It's nice to take things off. The not table. everything's a five, you know. Yeah, 
So well, these are the beers we usually leave on the shelf because they don't look the way these look. These looked good. Yep. These are nice looking beers. This one I bought when I bought from the uh, beer local guy. Mm. And those ones I bought because, again, I wanted, I wanted to have something different. I wanted to have, you know, a Schwartz beer or, you know, a different style. Something that 500 beers on the podcast, we've never done a Schwartz beer. Never? No. I feel like we have. No. The, mm. the one thing I will say from this last week, and if I can implore anyone and I will help you out, the Reserve Society for the brewery, I, and again, mm-hmm. we're not a paid sponsor or whatever. No Every sponsors. beer, uh, I've gifted JT1. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've opened a couple. All mm. of them have been 475s or 5s. Damn. I haven't opened them. They well, are, I cellared the shit out of them. You that should. Beer. I'm glad I've bought more of the other ones. I'm glad I re- joined the Reserve Society for a second year in a row. That that to me is a home run. If you're going to have an experience, it's going to be a hallmark. You're gonna. It's not just pulling it out on a Wednesday or something like that, mm-hmm. and you're excited because you ordered some Chinese or whatever. It's been the best value so far because all of those beers, the the price point that it blends down to, even with uh, I cracked my first Black Tuesday. All of them are phenomenal, and again, I care about the conversation. I do. Mm-hmm. We do a beer podcast. We do. That's, We're watching it. That's all. That's all I care about is that co- that conversation or whatever. And all of those beers have elicited. Like one one of the beers I did this last week was a uh, um, um, a partridge in a pear tree, and it was a pear beer. Oh, nice. And we, again, like it's great. I like it's pear. so creative. Pear is, is clean and fresh. Seek out the brewery. Join the reserve Seek society. Out the brewery. If you if you like this podcast uh, and craft beer and stuff like that, I you won't you won't be disappointed. Well, on another local note, um, one of the best beers I've ever had at King's Table, specifically at King's Table, is the carrot cake branch and bone beer. And it has not been there for years. I'd say I had it two or three years ago. I don't remember when they brewed it last. Yeah. Fucking awesome beer. They finally brought it back. And and um, whether or not this is going to benefit them or not, they claim that it's now thicker. So they had a good thing, and I think it worked. And it was a five almost every time. I mean, everyone I talked to who had that beer loved it. Yeah. Should you have changed it? That's yet to be determined. I'm going to find out. Um, hopefully, I'll get to King's Table while Chuggalo Bobby's here, who also doesn't listen. But, uh, God, just if you can get your hands on that carrot cake beer, you will not regret it. Cream cheese fro- frosting, right? On your carrot cake? Is that how I you... believe that's how it normally goes. Yeah. I don't... It's one of the few, I like, I mean, besides, you know, cheesecake and stuff like that, but, like, that, that, that cream cheese or whatever, you, because you want... That that profile in the frost. My entire life, I've been cake over pie, and and I I had thoughts probably on carrot cake even, but then I discovered Mahaffey's, and now yeah. I'm a pie over cake guy. But there's one cake that reigns supreme, and it's burnt sugar cake. If you haven't had it, you should. Yeah. Katie makes it. It's great. Are you pie over cake? I, I mean, you don't eat sweets, but. Uh, Every pump, once in a while, pumpkin pie is a standard. Pumpkin pie is great. I, I, I crave it. Um, yeah, I like pumpkin pie because that, that that spice profile to it. Um, cake is an easy skip for me in life. Easy skip. See, yeah. I like cake. I think cake's good. Mm. My, you know, Chuggalo Mom makes great cakes. And uh, she said that she wants to join the uh, Advent calendar build. She did. Yeah, she did. Oh. She, Sorry, Mom. she said in one of the comments or whatever. She oh, goes, she says she wants to come one year. Yeah. To the build. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. She can come to the build. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She no, doesn't want to advocate. No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't drink. I was like, she's not going to drink those beers. No. She had like one beer in the past 30 years, probably. And she made a video of it. That's crazy. Pretty awesome. Uh, all right. Parting, parting thoughts. Favorite Thanksgiving food? Go. Oh, if I could just have one. If you, uh, if, oh, you got the whole spread, someone, yeah, you got a whole hun- family over and everyone brought at least something you like. Yeah. What's hun- the one thing? It's always, and this will never change. We've done this probably a couple, of, I don't know if, we, honky sandwiches. Honky, the next day sandwiches? No, 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 no. I don't it's, know what a honky sandwich it's is. It's pumpernickel bread. Pumpernickel open bread. Open face. Open face. Um, cheese whiz. 
Oh, cheese whiz. Crumpled up potato chips. You don't see cheese whiz at the Thanksgiving table. No, that, that's why I'm... Like, it's just... That's marked, just like your favorite food. My... No, because this it only... This is your we favorite Thanksgiving food. We only do it during the high holidays. No shit. Yep. So, we... I, my grandma I've, calls I it I was trying to go it. traditional, but that works. I like that. Yeah, no, that's my... Um, I, I've been on the record, and I'm consistent. You can go through history and look at that. There's something about the right stuffing with gravy. You know, gravy gets on it, and... I don't put the gravy. Well, I do probably put the gravy on it I'm now, but up sometimes it like leaks stuffing. into the stuffing, yeah. and that's just so good. Um, I like all the desserts, but I think Thanksgiving's the only time each year that I even eat stuffing. It's also probably the only time, other than on like what like lunch meat sliced sandwiches, that I eat turkey. Like fuck the turkey. The turkey's the worst part about Thanksgiving. To oh, be honest okay. with you. Okay. No, we we we've got we've got. We've got a lot of time on we this. Got, we've got t- um, time. What kind of stuffing do you like? You're going to hate my answer. No. I like Stouffer's box stuffing. Uh, stove my top. Mom, stove, yeah, stove, stove, stove top. top. My mom used to make White Castle stuffing. We're, we're, we're the and same. for some reason, it never hit. We need, to, we need to toast this. Oh, man. There's more beer. I thought I drank all this. So, time. my family... Um, I there's, like stove top stuff. There's two different types of... I've been, with, I've been with my wife since 2008, so 16 years. I've spent 14 of those Thanksgivings with her. It feels that way. Mm. Uh, Chuggalo Mom, if you're listening, or Chuggalo Ma, if you're listening. Mm. Uh, Chuggalo Pa, or Chuggalo Todd, um, Mm. they're going to... I won't bring up the story where they're like, remember the reason... Oh, this is going to be... You're bringing it up right now. Yep. No. I'm happy with it, though. Keep going. Remember what I told you this last week, the reason why that episode won't won't make air? That happened at a Thanksgiving. Oh, no shit. And my my mother in law came over to me and she goes, "It's going to be okay." Like, yeah, it kind you, of consoled me. Please still join the family. Yeah. Were please, you in the family yet? Please, no, not no, not so, lately. So she was trying to keep you. Yes, but anyways, and my worked. my father in law. Good job. I I I love him and appreciate him so much. Thanksgiving is his high holiday. Okay. Because he loves to cook everything. Awesome. Everything. Okay. I hate cooking. Ta- table is set. My favorite stuffing by far is just stovetop. Just, yes, okay. same. It's, there's something about it. The flavor's there. My father-in-law makes his um, uh, traditional stuffing. Goes in the bird. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Goes in the bird, yeah. The other side of the family, my um, my mother-in-law's side of the family, they make a sweet dressing. So it's got the raisins, the apples, oh, and stuff yeah. in it. yeah. Not a fan. Neither one of them is my... But I'm I'm nothing if not an appropriate accommodator, especially in that I'm type sure of situation. Are. You eat three I stuffings. I didn't. No, I didn't say anything. Mm. It wasn't until my sister in law joined the family mm. that we got stovetop. No shit. The first year was just this last year. I just, I just held my p's and q's. Yep. She joins the family. Go to the store and buy seventeen boxes, and she listens. She listens. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I, I was the officiant in their wedding. Quiet applause with the yeah. microphone in in mind. Uh, Yep. Stovetop stuffing has good flavor. And this is not... My it's mom the listens. Best. And she's probably mad that I'm saying... Like, I liked the stuffing she made. She used to make White Castle stuffing. Which I've, I've heard. People have heard about it. I've heard. You go get a Crave case. Chuggle Aaron has you made it before. You rip it up and you stuff it into the bird. And you cook the turkey with that inside. I just felt like all of the... What makes White Castle delicious, um, it cooks out. Yeah. It cooks out of the stuffing. So, um, stovetop just has it's the, the right seasoning. I could eat it once a week. It's so good, and I only eat it once a year. It's insane. Uh, but it's probably really bad for for you. But um, I, I do like that. Number That's two, number and two. I'm going to back up JT. We don't agree on anything. We we fight. We, we do agree that we hate each other. We just drink beer. Turkey is so, overrated. Turkey's overrated. Ham. Ham. Everyone everyone agrees on it. The only reason the turkey people, big turkey still wins is because it's tradition. Chuggalo that's, Nicole doesn't like ham. That's the only reason. Get out of here. And she Chuggalo doesn't know sister. what she's talking about because... Get, get out of here. Ham is ham a much is better a meat. Ham is superior meat. It is. It's so f- good. The flavor. Every, every way. There's No one goes, you know what I'm really craving? A turkey blank. Everyone's yeah, right. like, I want... Ba- pork, pig, everything is so versatile. Yep. Ham is much better. My father-in-law, who, again, I said... It's his high holiday. It's high holiday. Would prefer, but traditionally, we make turkey, and it, he makes an amazing turkey. It's mm. it's good, 
But it's not ham. Like, just give me a ham steak. Give me a ham. Ham sandwich on Hawaiian bread. Yeah, just That's anything. But like a ham steak, it's just you, you just throw it. Every everyone prefers the savoriness and the deliciousness of ham. Everyone likes the traditional idea of turkey, right? It, and that's but where, turkey, and that's I mean, where big turkey. Yeah, that's that's just that's just the turkey and then, companies and then, and then playing keep, propaganda games. And then Butterball can keep their uh, turkey hotline open or whatever. I've got a turkey, uh, GT, uh, unplanned. Go open my beer fridge right now. All right, unplanned. Unplanned. I'm guessing you got. Let's see. I'm gonna guess the size. Top top shelf. Seventeen pounds. I think it's 15. 15.65. Yep. Very good. It's smaller this year because there's only six of us. For 15 pounds. If and you, no one, everyone if you craves served it. my Thanksgiving without the turkey, I think there'd be a very limited number of people who'd notice. Yeah, oh yeah. Chuggle yeah. mom would everyone notice, but would I don't notice. think she'd be upset everyone about would it. Notice. Let me know in the comments. Where... We have a 17 four days away. Certain. This thing was... I, I got home from the cabin. This thing was sitting out already... Like, you, it's got to be... You know, you saw it like four or five days early. Yep. We have a 17-pound turkey, but we did buy a ham this year. Yep. So it's funny you mentioned that. We do have the ham. Yeah. I, I, I'm glad because I, I restocked I restocked the fridge before I left. And I go, do you need me to make room for the turkey? And, you know, we were questioning, you know, attendance and stuff like that. So we're trying to figure it out because my in-laws were coming down. And my father-in-law made the call and was like, this is what we need. Do you drink all day? Do I drink all day? Do you no. drink all day? No? Yes? I do. But only light beer. I'm a, I'm a light beer on Thanksgiving. Well, the Schwartz beer would be great. Yeah, I would. It's only a 4.6. Uh, I do, you know, ch- this is one of the rare times that Chuggalo Bobby and I can hang out. So we grab some Bush Light. And I he likes Miller Light. So much Bush Light this last week. And, he, and we just hang out and watch football. Sometimes we go to the Turkey Ball Beef Review. Oh yeah, that's that's right. Which we won't do this year. I got an extra. It's right below uh, uh, JT's uh, left elbow there. Um, I got another rack of Blapples. Mm. Uh, buddy was hoarding them. Wow! I took a, one one. Oh yeah, I'm excited. That one is bla- exciting. I took one Blapple up. You've been hoarding them. It said it said it was uh, it was supposed to be drank by February of 2023. Oh, it's still good. I'm I'm proving that it's still good because I so have other stuff in the fridge. What year beer was that? Which one was that? Uh, last year's. Oh. The last year they did it. Not not. I much. still have one case left from like 21. Yeah. Um, I've been hoarding them hard. I need to start drinking those things. I the, do drink them. The, the other the other thing that upset me, Bush Light adjacent, and uh, this is this is a meaty, this is a um, very Thanksgiving Day episode, mm-hmm. is someone was calling it up at Deer Camp a blatte. Right? Oh yeah, no, I mm, I jumped on that like what? a bitch in heat. Like, what? Yeah. A blatte? Yeah. You can't. So a. Uh, 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 the latte, what is it? Bush latte? Yeah. Is one nickname. You can't combine, you can't yeah. mash them together. Or like, like a black like like I said, it's or latte. like a blue smoothie. Like I've heard, blue, I, I've done blue, blue smoothie good. before. Um, but not a blatte. Come on. That's like blocky. Come on. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're trying too hard. You're yeah. doing too much. Do less. Yeah, do less. Do less. That's it. That's it. That's it. Happy that Thanksgiving. An amazing transition. Happy okay. Thanksgiving to everybody. I hope you find the best Black Friday deals. If you do, get me something. That's all. Yeah, size uh, size medium. Should no, medium. no mediums. Yeah, I don't fit medium. in a medium anything. He Shirts, would, pants, well, he, anything. He, he, what you want him to wear is in medium. I guarantee it. Oh, what you want me to wear? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Everything, everything you'd want me to wear is extra large. Bye.